This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey everybody! Recently I was browsing around on the weird side of eBay when I came across some interesting laser gadgets in the health and beauty section. Now you'd probably think this stuff here would be pretty benign, well at least compared to what I'm used to buying on eBay, but I mean some of this stuff was really concerning. I mean these things are advertised to do procedures that typically require huge lasers, so that means that either these things are fake or they're extremely dangerous. Now naturally I had to find out for myself what kind of lasers we're dealing with here, so I bought a few to test out for this video. Oh yeah, before I go on, I should warn you that all the crazy stuff you're about to see was done completely for educational purposes. I mean, if DIYing medical treatment wasn't sketchy enough, then doing it with some mystery device that was made without any regards to safety regulations is a big no-no. So yeah, please don't try this at home. Alright, let's start with this one. This is the Neat Cell Spot Removal Laser, which is an apparently an amazing all-in-one cosmetic device. This thing can apparently remove moles, tattoos, freckles, warts, and pretty much any blemish you can think of, and all for only $40. Wow, what a deal! Now is this thing actually legit, or is it just the LED equivalent of essential oils? Well, one way to find out. This is all what came with the kit here. You got the main device right here, a, a power supply, these goggles, and then uh, these instructions. Now as a general rule, I don't trust goggles that come with cheap kits like these, so I'll be using my own to test this thing out. Now there really isn't any assembly here. I mean the thing just turns on when I plug it in. Now I guess uh, I guess this changes the uh, power here and then this changes uh, I guess the frequency. Well, here goes nothing. Oh no, no. Okay, this is one of the worst ideas I've ever seen make it into a commercial product. Like where do I even start? This thing is just a powerful blue laser diode jammed in a pen style casing, which honestly isn't even that much different than many of the lasers I've shown on this channel. But using this as a cosmetic device, there are so many issues with that. Let's start with the laser's color. Blue light tends to be strongly absorbed by skin, which means you end up dumping most of the laser's power into healthy skin tissue. This is a big problem, as the whole idea is to not destroy your skin as you target an unwanted blemish like a tattoo. It's not like this thing is weak either. It clearly packs a lot of power. It can easily light matches, as well as burn a bunch of other materials. So what can this thing do to the skin? Well, can't hurt to try, right? Ow! Heck. Ow! Yeah, that wasn't pleasant at all. I can't imagine how awful it would feel trying to laser off an entire tattoo with something like this. Best case scenario, you replace the tattoo with a horrific scar. Worst case scenario, well, there's a lot of worst case scenarios here. Believe it or not, the burn hazard is not the biggest risk here. As usual with powerful lasers, the real risk is instant, permanent blindness. In fact, let's test the average output power with my laser power meter by Gentech EO. Okay, so uh, a little under a watt. That puts it in the highest laser danger category there is, which means just looking at the spot on your skin can burn your eyes out without goggles. Speaking of goggles, let's take a look at the goggles that came with the laser. Huh, look at that, they're completely opaque. You can't see anything through them. How are you supposed to operate the laser if you can't see anything? Well, that's the thing. These aren't meant for you. They're meant for your patient. This thing is advertised to treat basically everything, including common facial blemishes like acne and freckles. Pointing this thing at your face is just asking to go blind, and that's ignoring the fact that this thing would likely give horrible scars on your face as well. Oh yeah, one more thing. Why is the laser flashing like that? Well, it turns out that pulse lasers are preferred for a lot of dermatology treatments, as it allows the target to be destroyed faster than the heat produced can diffuse out and damage other tissues. However, there's one problem with that. The listing claims that the laser can do picosecond pulses, which would be an incredible feat for a laser of this size. It turns out, though, that the pulses are a little over a tenth of a second, which is not only too slow to make much of an effect here, but it also means that the seller's claim is off by a factor of over 100 billion. I'm legitimately impressed on how many bad ideas were jammed into this single device. I mean, this thing's a stain on our species! But seriously though, if you know anybody with one of these or something similar, please tell them to get rid of it immediately. This product is alarmingly popular and has serious potential to cause permanent injury. For the record, there are similar products out there with different names, and some versions use a near IR laser instead of a blue one. These are all likely to be just as awful as the one I tested. To make matters worse, simply looking up info on laser tattoo removal means you'll probably get ads for this terrible device. Or maybe you'll just say in a Facebook message that you regret a tattoo, and next thing you know the entire internet's trying to sell you one. This is a dangerous side effect of being cyberstalked by massive corporations, because they'd much rather sell you this trash than refer you to a doctor. Now luckily, there's an easy way around this. In fact, I'd like to introduce you to my sponsor Surfshark. 
Surfshark's clean web service is a great way to get rid of these intrusive ads. Even if you aren't swayed by dangerous medical ads, simply blocking this content can give faster browsing as well as save on data. Of course, this is just a small fraction of what Surfshark has to offer. There are a lot of reasons why somebody might find a VPN useful, but my main use is for bypassing throttling. ISPs are notorious for slowing your speeds when you visit streaming sites like YouTube. Ever have YouTube slow to a crawl when other sites work just fine? There are a lot of possible reasons why this might happen, but there's a good chance it's from throttling. Surfshark is my best tool to combat this. Geospoofing is another popular use of Surfshark as it's an easy way to bypass censorship. Content not available in my country? No problem. I'll just use Surfshark to virtually put my computer in a country where it is available. To top it off, Surfshark is the only VPN to allow account use on unlimited devices. Use my code STYROPYRO to get 83% off and an extra 3 months free. The link's in the description below, and there's a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try it out at no risk to yourself. So yeah, I want to give a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Alright, on to the next one. This system is advertised to do pretty much the same thing as the last laser, except this one's 10 times more expensive and obviously a lot bigger. I've already made an entire video on this ridiculous system in the past, but since this is a video on sketchy DIY medical lasers, I'm obligated to break this thing out again. There's a lot more to this kit than the last one. For one, the laser head here is separate from the power supply. Then you have all this other gear here. Uh, you got a foot switch here. Uh, you got these tips here that change the laser's output color. Uh, you got some actual operator goggles as well as the patient goggles. Uh, you got this funnel for adding cooling water and this treatment cream here. So what's so different about this one compared to the pen laser if they're both supposed to treat the same thing? Well, pretty much everything. Unlike the last one, which was a diode laser, this is an old school flashlamp pump laser that uses ND YAG as the lasing medium. In fact, it's quite similar to the first lasers ever built in that regard. Don't let the old tech fool you though, this is an absolutely terrifying laser. In fact, it's so powerful that it trashed the sensors on the cameras I used to film it, and that's without even taking a direct hit. The peak output power here is millions of watts, which is powerful enough to ignite air at the focal point and blow craters in a block of tungsten. For those that watched the original video of mine, you might remember that I blew up the flash lamp while trying to make it stronger. In my defense, I bought the laser used and the lamp was already near end of life. Luckily, it was easy to score a replacement lamp and get the laser back to working order. Of course, it's hard to find words to describe the eye hazard of a laser like this. By far the biggest flaw with this kit is that the goggles sent with it are totally useless for the laser. The fact that you can still see green light coming through them means there's no protection here. Plus, as my camera shows, you don't need to point it directly in your eye for it to cause irreparable damage. In fact, a set of high OD wraparound goggles that actually protect you from the laser will cost nearly as much as the laser itself. On the flip side, the nerd in me is really impressed that a Q-Switch Jag laser system with relatively high pulse energy can be bought for $500. I mean seriously, you'd be hard pressed to beat that price if you build a similar system on your own. The laser is clearly good at blowing craters into things, but is it any good at the treatments it's advertised for? Well, it depends. Now I should be careful how I say this, but I do think a trained operator could use this system to remove some types of tattoos. I mean the short pulses and wavelength options are similar to what you'd find in some professional systems. Unlike the last laser, this system produces extremely short pulses, on the order of 10 billionths of a second. This allows the laser to obliterate tattoo pigments while leaving the surrounding skin relatively unharmed. That being said, the reason it's so cheap is because safety regulations were not taken into account while designing this. This thing is nowhere near an ideal system. I mean the controls are very inaccurate, and sometimes the laser just shoots out random pulses for no reason at all. To top it off, even a professional system in the hands of an untrained operator is bound to leave lots of scarring on whoever it gets used on. This system isn't just advertised to remove tattoos. It also claims to be able to remove eyebrows and skin blemishes. Now eyebrows? In case it isn't obvious, pointing a million watt laser at your face isn't a great idea. But the thing is, this isn't even a good system for removing hair. There are lasers that can do that, but they have much longer pulse lengths which are more ideal for blowing up hair follicles. Aside from the intended purposes for the laser, this thing can pull off some pretty crazy experiments. The power density at the focal point is so high that it will actually ignite air. Plus with the frequency doubling tip, the laser is transformed into a scary powerful green laser, and then that can be used to excite organic dyes to the point that they operate as a laser as well. Compared to the last kit, this one is certainly more impressive. I mean other than the astronomical blinding hazard, it could probably be used by a trained operator to remove some types of tattoos. 
It would still be a terrible idea to use it on yourself, though. Alright, what do we have next? Oh yeah, how about this laser plasma thing? This one is supposed to remove a lot of the same blemishes as the other systems, but this one is by far the cheapest of the bunch at a little over $5. It's also the most mysterious one. No instructions came with the thing, just the device and some needle attachments. I have no clue how I'm supposed to use it. Honestly, this doesn't look like a laser at all. I mean, if this is supposed to be the output, then it certainly isn't visible light that it produces. Well, let's turn this thing on. Um... Is it even... Oh, okay. Yeah, so, okay, that must be activated, and this has to be the output. Huh. Hmm. Ah! Heck. What is this thing? I mean, it's definitely not a laser. There's no visible output, but it definitely burns or shocks or something. Ow! Yeah, so it can definitely burn, but the tip itself isn't hot, so it's got to be producing high-frequency electricity to burn like that. Okay, check this out. Since it can light up this neon bulb, this thing's got to be producing relatively high voltage. I mean, these things don't light up until you're close to 100 volts or so. Okay, this is really impressive. So this is a Nixie bulb here. And look at that, it lights the whole thing up. I can even do it capacitively straight through the glass. Wow. Yeah, that is really, really cool. I've played with it a bit more now, and I've noticed that it seems to produce an arc to objects that have a bit of capacitance to them. It's actually kind of fun engraving anodized metals with it when the power is cranked up. Plus, I can use it to draw silly things on an apple. Alright, so it's a lot of fun for screwing around with, but is it of any use for burning off skin blemishes? Well, the thing is, high voltage, high frequency sources do get used in medicine to burn off skin blemishes. They don't exactly look like this, though. The idea itself is pretty cool, though, because at high enough frequencies, the polarity flips faster than nerve cells can be depolarized. This is why it can burn, but not shock. Of course, that speaks nothing about the safety of this thing. Now, that being said, I do want to try removing a scar just to see how well it works. This scar right here seems to cause me a lot of problems in my social life. Alright, here goes nothing. Oh, heck. Why do I do this stuff? Ow! Oh, my... <laughs> oh, this sucks. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. It smells so bad. Uh, oh, that was extremely unpleasant. Now I'm too impatient to wait and see what this thing turns into, but judging by how that felt, it's got to make whatever blemish you have much worse. Now there could also be a risk of deep tissue burns here. I'm curious what's actually inside this thing, so I'm going to tear it apart. Wow, the FDA and FCC would have a stroke over this. What is this, a Slayer Exciter circuit? I mean, the burns from this thing feel a lot like the burns my Slayer Exciter gives me. Ow! Hmm, I wonder... I'm kidding. Well, I certainly don't recommend this for any sort of medical or cosmetic use, and this thing definitely isn't a laser like the listing said. However, it still may be useful as a portable high-frequency source for lighting up gas tubes. Alright, what do we have left? Well, a lot of things, but I'm just going to skip to this monstrosity. This is a huge surgical laser that came out of a hospital. Now, I'll be honest, it's not totally fair to include this one in the video because it was never marketed for DIY use. Now, that being said, it is still a medical laser I did buy on eBay. Uh, now, like a lot of medical goodies, uh, this one ended up on the surplus market when its licensing expired and a newer laser tech became available. Now, I knew this thing was 150 grand, but thanks to eBay, I bought this one for 500 bucks. This thing can do over 100 watts average of green light, which makes it by far the brightest laser that I own. The peak output power is many thousands of watts. Pump and dump, baby. A hundred watts of green light is so bright that it's hard to capture on camera. So as a comparison, here I have a 1.6 watt green laser that I threw together recently. Now obviously this thing is extremely bright. I mean, it lights up my entire shop. Now let's take a look at what this looks like compared to the surgical laser. Pretty crazy, right? It makes this thing look like nothing. As expected, this thing can tear through a lot of materials as it was designed for blowing up flesh in a surgical setting. This laser actually has a lot in common with the Big Tattoo laser. 
They're both lamp pumped frequency doubled NDAG lasers, but this one uses an arc lamp instead of a flash lamp. This means the output is more or less continuous. I say more or less because this laser is actually pulsed. It just looks continuous because the rep rate is so high. Believe it or not, that thing is only outputting light about 1% of the time, but it's doing so in pulses that exceed 10,000 watts. The lamp actually stays on the entire time here, but these pulses are generated via Q switching by an acousto optic modulator. This kills the gain of the cavity for a brief period to allow the YAG crystal to build up energy, and then it restores the gain for a moment to allow the energy to be released all at once in a powerful pulse of light. These pulses have two functions. For one, they're preferred over CW in many surgical applications involving ablating tissues, but it also makes the conversion step from IR to green much more efficient, and this is due to the gigantic power densities attained in the frequency doubling crystal. The pulses are being generated many thousands of times per second, and in fact, you can hear the pulses when I stick something in the beam. That hum is actually due to the laser pulses inducing vibrations in the material. This laser was not plug and play like the other ones. In fact, the manufacturer put considerable effort to prevent people like me from being able to use it. Obviously that wasn't able to stop me, but it wasn't exactly due to genius on my part. The first issues I encountered were probably due to the fact that this thing sat in storage for several years. A water cooling line exploded and soaked the electronics inside the first time I powered it up. I replaced some bad fittings and then let it dry for a while before firing it up again. Surprisingly, it still started up just fine after this, but even so, the onboard computer prevented the system from making any output without being fed service cards. This meant that I needed to either build my own crude lamp supply for the laser, or just find a way to hack the onboard computer. The first option would be painstaking and suboptimal, so the second option was by far preferred. I don't exactly get along with digital electronics, but thankfully, I knew just who to ask for help with this. My friend Kevin, who's the owner of Starlight Photonics, has spent considerable time reverse engineering this surgical laser, and has even developed a board that overrides the original controls. I bought one of these boards from him, and sure enough, it worked super well. I just had to solder a few connections, and after that I had full control over the system. I can adjust a bunch of parameters like lamp current and Q-switch rate, as well as monitor the water temperature and pressure. His board plus the surgical laser gives an unbelievably low-cost way of attaining a 100-watt green laser system. I don't usually recommend eBay sellers, but this is an exception. I've bought from Starlight Photonics for many years, and I've gotten a lot of cool parts for my projects from them. Now obviously attaining a 100 watt laser system as a new experimenter is a terrible idea, but for research projects on a budget, it's a pretty hard deal to beat. Now I could go on for hours and all the weird stuff I've bought on eBay, but at that point it really isn't in line with the original topic here. The main takeaway is that none of these gadgets are safe to use on yourself. Honestly, it's really disturbing on how many of these gadgets get sold in such high volumes to clueless customers. That's not to say I don't see the appeal here, though. I mean, for somebody who's looking to get rid of a blemish but they're embarrassed or can't afford treatment, they might look into getting one of these products. And to be fair, there's not much info out there if you're trying to find safety concerns. And to make matters worse, there's probably a lot of fake reviews out there as well. None of these gadgets are safe, but the real loser in this bunch is the need cell. This thing is an absolute disgrace. If there's any gadget that should be wiped from sites like Amazon or eBay, it's this one. Shame on whoever put this thing on the market. Well, I guess that's about all I have for you today. I do want to thank Surfshark again for sponsoring this video, so be sure to check out the link in the description. So yeah, until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing!